Hello everyone, welcome to my channel and in this video we'll be solving this problem from kinematic section of Pathfinder and it's a problem from challenger understanding and it's based on the concept of chasing. So do try this problem out for four to five minutes before uh, watching the solution. It's okay if you don't get it, just give it a try and then come back for the solution. And if you did enjoy the solution, please like and subscribe to my channel. So let's see the problem statement. Starting from the center of a circular path of radius r, a particle p chases another particle q that is moving with a speed v on a circular path. The chaser p moves with a constant speed u and always remains collinear with the center and the location of the chased q. So if you try to show it on a diagram, so this particle q is moving uh, on the circular path with a speed v which is constant and it's given that the particle p that is chasing this particle q is moving with a constant speed of u and it always remains on the same line connecting the center of the circle and the location of q. So if I try to join these two lines, so the particle p was initially at o and after some time, let's say it is at this point. So they're asking eventually what will be the path of p and what will be the time taken by p to reach that path. Okay, so, so the biggest hint the, for this problem is that, let's say this angle is theta. Now, as it is given that this P will always be collinear with O and Q, so we can clearly see the, the omega of the line OP, it would be exactly the same as omega of the line OQ, right? So this person P would have two components of velocity. One is going to be perpendicular to it, so in the theta direction, so let's say it's U theta, and one is going to be in the radial direction, let's say it is U R. Omega of line OP, now we can write it as U theta divided by r where r will be the instantaneous distance of this point p from o okay and this has to be equal to the omega of oq which which is constant and it is equal to v divided by capital r now uh, it's also given that the speed of the particle p is constant so we can say u theta squared plus u r squared equals u squared so as the point p reaches closer and closer towards q value of r will increase and as r increases theta u theta must also increase right now as u theta will increase u r has to decrease after some time u r will become zero now let's take it case by case so if we say u is less than v so what will happen after a while is that the radial velocity is going to become zero and and u perpendicular would become u and let's say at at this point of time let's say the radius is r and now as you can see this will move in this circle whose radius is r and is concentric with the outer circle. Uh, in the u equals v case there finally both of them would move uh, along the same circle and for similarly for u greater than v case uh, the particle p will move in a circle that is concentric with q but the radius is going to be greater than this r. So yeah so that is that was the answer to the first problem so finally they will move in a circle but it but the radius of the circle will depend on the value of u that we choose. So in the second problem, we have we've been given that uh, v is 4 meter per second and u is 8 meters per second. u is greater, so the particle will reach the point q sometime, after some time, and we have to find that time. Now we can also write one more equation here. dr by dt, which is the rate of increase of this distance r, is going to be ur. Okay. Now using these three equations, uh, now in equation number two, I'm going to substitute u theta from the first equation plus dr by dt, the whole squared equals u squared. Now we have a differential equation in r, so let's solve it. So if we solve it, we'll get dr by dt to be. Okay, so we'll finally end up with this equation. Now we can integrate on both sides. So at t equal to zero, the particle was at the origin, so the r value would be zero and at t equal to some general time t, let's say this value is r. So now integral uh, is going to be sine inverse. So this would be sine inverse, sine inverse. The limits are from zero to smaller. And on right side, it will be, we have the position of the particle as a function of time now. In, in option A, so we found out what will be the final path of point P, right? So if u is less than v, it will be along this circle. And if u is greater than v, it will the final path will be something like this. And if u is equal to v, both their radiuses would be same. In option A, they have also asked how long will it take to reach on this path. Finally, let's say so. If you, let's say if you are writing for this case, as we know, this would be the final case. So we can write 
we can equate the omegas, right? So u divided by small r would be v divided by capital R. And from here, we'll get the final radius of the path to be capital R u divided by v. So now if we substitute this value of radius into our equation here, so inside the sine inverse, there would be one and sine inverse of one is going to be pi by two. So the time turns out to be pi v divided by two r. So which turns out to be a constant, right? And it is independent of u. So doesn't matter what the value of u is, finally we'll reach this final radius after a time of pi by two v divided by r. Okay, and it's the same for this case and it's also same for the case in which u is greater than v. So now in option B, we had to find the time in which particle P catches Q, which means we have to set R to be the radius of the circle. Oh, actually I made a mistake here. This would be R by V. Okay, this would be R. Okay, this here would be V by R. This would be V by R. So this value of time would be pi R divided by 2V. So now if we set the value of R, uh, you'll get the answer to be. So this would be R is given to be 84 v is 4 and this will be sine inverse of half and you'll get the answer to be 11 meters so that was it for this video guys if you have any doubts you can comment down below and yeah thanks for watching